My name is Nils Hellstrom. If that name rings a bell at all, it's probably in connection with the words fanatic, lunatic, heretic. Actually, I'm a scientist, and these other descriptions have come as a result of my dedication and my work. My obsession, some have called it, with certain findings I've made. It's not easy to be obsessed. The past 18 months, it's cost me two fellowships, one assistant professorship, and uh, even a few friendships. I don't care about that, really. In a way, it's kind of flattering. What I really regret is that after nine years of concentrated work, I've learned something that no one wants to hear. But unless someone does hear, unless someone is at least exposed to it, we as a species might pass from existence without ever knowing why. and other evidence leads me to the following belief. I'll tell it to you once, I'll tell it to you simply. I'll tell it to you in terms that no one likes to hear. 
If any living species is to inherit the earth, it will not be man. Long before the time that hydrogen bombs and pollution have put an end to us, we will face competition for the earth itself from a life form we arrogantly ignore. We will be overrun, deposed, and succeeded by an army that was here long before us and is ultimately better equipped to survive than we. Battalions of mindless soldiers entering the contest with capabilities beyond our imagination. Yes, I'm talking about insects. And if you at this moment dare to think this is lunacy, I invite you to remain in your seat, draw your own conclusion, and learn the inevitable destiny of ignorance. Today, as most other animal species are diminishing in population, only two are definitely on the increase, man and insect. Man, because he is the only creature with the ability to radically change the earth, 
and the insect because he is the only creature who can adapt to whatever changes man can make. When you see him in a certain perspective, it is we who are the dwarfs, he who is the giant. He can pull an object a hundred times his weight, jump a distance 50 times his size. And if he's carrying the right kind of juice, kill tiny creatures like us with a simple bite in the back of the neck. Assuming for the moment that he is our opponent, let's see in a physical sense what he has going for him. Face is functional and without expression. Only eyes and a mouth, just enough to keep the rest of the body alive. No muscles to smile with or frown with or in any way betray what's lurking beneath the surface. You'll notice he has no ears or nose, but don't think it makes him oblivious. He can see us and hear us through a thousand tiny hairs that warn him of our presence in every pore of his body. Compared to man, he's considered primitive, but for this reason, he's ultimately more durable. This is the main computer center at the California Institute of Technology. 
Here, the most sophisticated machinery man has at his command is being used to study the primitive brain of the insect, to document and probe the astounding efficiency of such a simple mechanism. Compared with man, we have to admit that the insect does not display what we could describe as intelligence. But don't feel too proud about that, because where there is no intelligence, there is also no stupidity. His brain is without evaluative power. It has no capacity to reason or to hesitate before reacting. Ironically, this works in his favor. For without man's burden of injecting emotion into what he sees, the insect reacts instantaneously, without regret, without regard for any but himself. Rather like a primitive computer, able to respond to information at the flick of a switch. Now, I wouldn't dare compare a brainless insect to man's brilliant computer, would I? Think about it. A computer is a mechanism programmed with a thousand tiny bits of information. It operates by juggling that information into a form of logic. I humbly submit, it's not without analogy in my insect
one creature's ability to communicate with the next. With the use of a highly sensitive microphone, I found silence around me to be filled with sound. Not only sound, but language. Dozens of languages as different from one another as Japanese is to English. English is to Russian. Listen. The perfect society. The perfect society. So the insect communicates by sound. But only man can transmit invisible signals across great distances of open space, right? Wrong. Look up into the sky. It's filled with invisible messages you'll never be able to detect. Without machines or electricity, or the label of genius, the insects were using the airwaves for transmission long before man ever set foot on their air.
I don't say it does it maliciously or on purpose. Just that as other creatures were endowed with the instinct to survive, we seem to have been endowed with the instinct to destroy. It is the need for individual luxury that creates the technology that destroys the planet, making it uninhabitable for all but one, the insect. The industrial waste that poisons our air, the DDT that poisons our food source, the radiation that destroys our very flesh are to the insect nothing more than a gentle perfume. And the toxins that are killing us and our fellow creatures, the insects live, reproduce, thrive, and gain strength by virtue of our growing weakness. I have something very unusual for you to see, which I've been saving to the last. It is to me a visual summation of the force to be unleashed if the balance tips any further in the insect's favor. It is, in a single demonstration, a portent of the future.
Scheme, everybody. Scheme.